Awaken to universal knowledge and consciousness through soul-stirring conversations and uplifting interviews that help you realize the divine power and force inside of you. Expand your mind and free your spirit with Sacred Valley Podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Sacred Valley. Today is August 5th. My name is Tara Crete. I am your host. I'm a life coach, a yoga teacher, and most recently I've become a podcaster and I'm loving, loving, loving what I'm doing. I always have a hard time trying to figure out what are we going to talk about today? This is literally the most exciting time to be alive. I am convinced that my soul has chosen this time to be here right now. I would not want to miss one moment of the changes of this world that's going on right now. It seems as though time is moving so swiftly. And I know a lot of people have a lot of doom and gloom about what's going on in this world. Uh, I feel a little opposite. I can straddle both sides. I can get very frustrated with all of the crazy things that's happening within governments around the world. But I can take a step back and see a more spiritual um, point of view, which is typically how, how I look at things. And the guest that we have today is the perfect person to talk about just this. I'm going to be introducing to you Will Drew. Will was born in Durban, South Africa, and he's been married for over 50 years to a wonderful woman. He has two daughters and two beautiful granddaughters that he loves spending time with in uh, Northern California. Will is a world traveler. He's a Reiki master, healer, and teacher. He was a businessman. He is a devout student of The Course in Miracles, and he's an all-around searcher of all things spiritual. I want to welcome Will Drew to the show. Hi, Will. Hi, Tara. Thank you so much. Wow, what an introduction. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Well, you know what I didn't mention? The, the really important part is you are my best friend's father, and I've known you for over 20 years now and have always enjoyed our conversations. I remember back in the 90s, you had us on an email chain, and you would send us the most far out stuff, all kinds of spiritual information and channeled entities. And I used to look forward to getting those emails from you. Do you remember when we used to do that? I, only just now that you remind me, you know, <laughs> there's so much of my of my past, even recent past, which uh, is, is I, I don't want to get in the way of where I'm going now because it's so important. I like that. So you want to keep it looking forward. That makes so much sense. So yeah. you were saying to me off camera that you're kind of excited about this time as well. I think you and I share that concept. Um, what is so exciting about what's going on right now for you? It's both exciting and frightening because um, at the moment, um, whether we like it or not, um, our solar system is moving into a, a, an area of the cosmos or, or the universe. Um, as we, as uh, the, um, the solar system moves around the central sun of the galaxy that we're in, um, we are moving into an energetic area um, of frequency that is totally different from where we've been. We, we are coming out of a duality-based energy into a completely balanced one. Now, we have become very, very used to um, the polarity-based duality. This is our illusion. It's duality-based, it's polarity-based. And we judge everything by what it is not. And even God is judged by what it is not. Some people are here to define what God is, and some people are here to define what is not. Now, this, uh, this creates conflict. And it's conflict that we are having to deal with right now. I love that. I just heard something similar to what you're talking about the other day, and someone said, if you're, we have a choice, right? We understand during this, this time we have free will and you can choose to believe in God or a higher power, or you can choose not to, but choosing not to believe in God is a choice. It's a very active choice, just as deciding that there is a God. Would you agree with that? I totally agree with it, but I also must uh, look at it from this point of view that we came in as um, uh, uh, we were created by God and we decided to express ourselves in this form. And we were here, to, if we were here to define what God is not, we were here under the auspices of our Father. 
which means that those people who define what God is not are not to be judged by those of us who think we define who God is. Hmm. There's no judgment, and that is where we get into trouble. You know, the Course of Miracles says, in my defenselessness lies my safety and my strength. Now, as soon as we defend ourselves from those who define mm -hmm. what God is not, we are holding them in place. I love that. In my defenselessness lies my safety and my strength. So that's really the definition of faith, isn't it? That's what that reminds me of. Um, there is, there's, in all of this, there's huge elements of faith because we're going into a place we do not know. Mm -hmm. So we can't say, well, I don't want to go there because it's really uncomfortable. We don't know what we're heading for. And we need faith in order to allow our physical response to the, to the frequencies uh, to move into this place. But there, there, there are gifts um, from um, uh, other sources, the Ascended Masters, the Angelic Realm, um, Gaia, um, King Jin, who's in charge of all the, the nature spirits. Um, we've got plenty of help, but we don't always look in the right place. I haven't. I certainly haven't. And when you don't look in the right place, you hit um, the opposites head on. Absolutely. I, I can attest to that myself. And I can also attest to forgetting that we can rely on and the unseen and the all powerful that there is someone. I don't want to call God someone. There is something There's a force there that's always willing to help. And over the years, I have forgotten that many times. And sometimes it would have to get so bad before I finally got down on my knees and then remembered, oh, I don't have to do this alone. <laughs> I don't have to get to those points very much anymore, thank goodness. We've all been there. And mm -hmm. and the one thing that I um I had to deal with, you know, uh if you if you're a searcher of the spiritual path, um, you get thrown at you all the time. Know thyself, know thyself, know thyself. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I took up the challenge and I had to say, Who am I? And uh, it's easy to look in the mirror and see who I am. And even my physical body, I only see about mm, 75, 80%. I can't see my back. I have to have a, I, have to have a I can only see the reflection of my back. That's but, right. but, but I digress. I digress. Because um, if I am not this body, then what am I? Well, that's easy. I'm made in the image of God. What is God? God is, God is invisible. God is infinite. God is not definable. God is spirit. This is probably the closest. God is, um, at, at one time in South Africa, I studied under a shaman, and he always used to talk about the form and the formlessness. He was Afrikaans speaking. Right. Um, exactly. And uh, that, that, that formlessness, I didn't understand him. That was 25, 30 years ago. <clears throat> so now I'm having to make, it comes back to me. Um, Ferdy, who was the shaman, he's, he's, he's in another realm at the moment. But I have an idea that he's prompting me and he digs me every night again. The formlessness. And it's the formlessness, the invisibleness. It is. That we have lost touch with, and we have no excuse for losing touch with it, because 2,500 years ago, there was a beautiful Hebrew man, I guess, called Zechariah, and he said simply, not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. By my spirit. Now we look at ourselves and we say, we're up in arms about all that's going on. We want to, we want to form groups and um, make sure that we got the Second Amendment up our back pocket and all this sort of thing. Bullshit. We, 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 we can do it in a different way, completely different way. Mm -hmm. Those people who are doing it in that way, fine. I'm not criticizing them. And I love listening to them. I, I, I'm followers of all these guys who, who, who are forming um, in the alternate media, uh, have, have the most wonderful ideas and give us wonderful information. Sure. And they well, there's, really, God, there's God really, there too, isn't there? God is in the Second Amendment. As you said, God is formless. God is spirit. 
God is shapeless, God is genderless, um, which in our patriarchal society, a lot of us, as we said earlier, off stage, you and I, we had this concept. I grew up thinking God was an old man in the sky with a long beard and who got very angry at you if you disobeyed. And um, that's just simply not who God is. That's really, really, really narrow minded. But you said something interesting, Will, that I wanted to touch on. You said a lot of people have lost touch with God. I believe what is happening right now, there's a spiritual war going on between good and evil. And it is playing out in the, in the human stage of politics. It's playing out in America anyway, between you know Democrats and Republicans and two different people. But the reality is, I think a lot of people have lost touch with God. And I think there has been a concerted, efforted series of events that kept us from being connected. And I've just recently had my, my Christ light inside of me literally turned on like a month ago and everything has changed. I've always had a very strong spiritual connection, but I really feel there's a lot of people walking around out there who have literally no connection whatsoever to any of this. You know, the, uh, the, the, the illusion that we live in is a duality based um, illusion. Um, and it is made up um, of concepts of perception and our perception comes from what we've learned and how do we know what a tree is if we weren't given a picture of a tree and 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 we gave it a label tree and it could have been any tree so we can get into detail at any later stage but a tree is a tree it's an archetypal energy that is attached to the vibration of any word um, in in um, in some of um, our, my contacts with the ascended masters um, in the group, they used to call me by my name when they addressed me, and they used the name Will. And then suddenly they said, "Sorry, Will, we are not going to refer to you as Will anymore. We are going to refer to you by your given name. My given name is a Welsh name, and it is Gwilym." G W I L Y M. I love your said, name. I love your name. <laughs> he's, and they said, This is where the power is. Now, I was given that about 20 years ago, and it was only recently that I've read a book on, um, on the power of your name. And <sighs> to praise it, it goes like this. When we were created in God's image, we were what I can only define, and now I've got to use third dimension terms, in a non-third dimensional environment, I was created and I became a fractal. A mm -hmm. fractal is a beautiful term to use for a piece of something that is identical to the whole in every way, but it is not the whole. So I became a fractal of God and the fractals of God and there were infinite numbers and the fractal of gods were given the challenge go out there and separate yourself from me and have fun mm -hmm. defining what I am and what I am not Okay, so this is just yeah. a fairy story. This is a just a fairy story, but we've right. been fed many, so this is just another. Okay, so um, <laughs> in this fairy story, um, we needed to separate ourselves from God. We did that by choosing a name for ourselves. Hmm. And that name in this fullness, my name that I chose, and my genetics are important too, but we, we, we're dealing with, with vibration of words at the moment. My name is Gwilym Mortimer Drew. Oh, it's okay. even a better name than I knew when you add the Mortimer to it. <laughs> well, yeah, that, but it, it's it's the whole name mm. that counts. Immediately I did that. I defined my shape, my body. Right. In perfection, because there were no, uh, no nothing, to, nothing to mess it up at that stage. Right. At that point in time, when I chose my name, I then went about building around the, vib the word vibration, vibrations 
the, the, the resonance that is produced by any word, but especially that word for myself and the body that I now that now houses me. So um now let me just say something first, because what you're talking about, in my opinion, what I'm reminded of is when I was studying quantum mechanics and quantum physics. This is a very similar um, explanation as to how we came about. You know, God was a thought. It's all that's all there was was God. If God went over here, it was only God. If God went over here, there was just God. And finally, God collapsed in on itself and created duality. So now he would he had relativity. He could see. You could measure time and space. And these fractals that you're talking about, I also it makes me think of light, right? Don't oh, it's we all light, light, light and love. All light, yes. It's all light, light yeah. and love. A fractal. That is that is it. That's it. Totally right, uh, Tara. So, shall I continue? Um, okay. Um, so now, I have a vibration which is, defines my physical body, and. What I've done is I have separated myself from the divine source by choosing a name. That separation is an illusion. I cannot separate myself from God, but I did. And I thought to myself, oh, my God, what have I done? That was the feeling of what is called original sin. Mm. Uh, a thought that created separation. Followed by the original sin comes guilt. Right. Followed by guilt comes fear of retribution. Okay. So we got sin, guilt, and fear, the unholy mm -hmm. trinity of the illusion that we know to this day. Correct. Everything is based on sin, guilt, and fear. Every perception that we have attracted to ourselves through books, through our, our, our family, through teachers, through our experiences, Everything is archetypal, it has an energy, and it is based on sin, guilt, and fear. That's the trifecta we, we, of separation. It, 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 it's, it. it's the simplicity of the illusion. That are the building blocks of the illusion that we are in, or have been in, um, are built on that. And it, it, one of the strongest um reactions uh, to that is survival we think we have to survive we are made in the image of god i am i am infinite i i i, I cannot die mm. i am made in the image of god and it we once we choose this physical expression we we go through cycles we can die but we only we we're only killing the illusion. That's all we're killing. <laughs> you and make it illusion. sound so enjoyable and nice when you put it in those terms. Well, it's it's so unimportant. It's not real. But we make it real. If I told you what I dreamt last night, you would be polite enough to listen to me and never think about it again. Well. That is what we have been through. And, you know, we have a huge importance attached. I, I, I went to university. I got an economics degree. <laughs> so what did I learn? I learned how to learn, and I learned how to apply my physical brain. But in so doing, I threw away the opportunity to link up with the source of infinite wisdom mm. through spirit, what the, what the Christians call the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That is the voice for God. Now, you want to make a decision, you base yourself, you decide. Do I make it based on the voice for the ego or the voice for God? That's right. Well, how do I hear the voice for God? That's another battle that I think is going on right now, too. There's a lot of different battles and wars taking place. Do you, so I call what we are going through right now on this planet, the great awakening. 
and a lot of people do. There's a huge movement out there. There, This is called the Great Awakening because I believe that it's time to start bringing spirit back into our life. There's too many people. We've gone so far into that separation area that you were talking about, the sin, the fear, the guilt that go along with being separated, along with the illusion of being separated. Um, do you call this the Great Awakening? Does any of that resonate with you? Well, it absolutely does. Um, uh, it it is um, it is essential if we want to move from our belief in duality, we can we can catch the bus because Gaia is ascending, right? Whether you like it or not, mm -hmm. it's as inevitable as the fact that our solar system is moving into a different place uh, uh, around the central sun. It's it's as inevitable as that. Now, do we want to fight it or do we want to flow with it? Definitely, we want to flow with it. It's much and, easier. And At some point in your, in, your, in your older age, we start to realize going with the flow is just, it's more than just an, a, a, a metaphor. It's so much easier to live your life. It, it is. Eh? And, 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 you know, we were talking earlier and, and we were talking about faith. Mm. The biggest test of faith that we will ever go through. Because we do not know what a thousand years of heaven on earth is going to be like. We cannot define it. How do you define quantum? I don't know. I can't define quantum. It's, it's, it's like asking, someone asked me last week, what is God? And I thought, oh, I hate that question. It's impossible to... It's impossible to define. It's impossible to ascribe a certain adjective to. And the English language is so limited as it is. To bring it down to either a word or a sentence seems almost, it just seems like the wrong thing to do. We need label for everything. We want a label for it. And, and we build a tunnel in Europe in order to, in, in order to find um, the part of God by smashing smaller and smaller pieces together. That's not how we find God. We don't mm -hmm. find God by colliding um, the smallest particle that we know and think that we'll end up by, by God is infinite. God is not – actually, God is infinitely small, but it's an energy, not a particle. That's right. So you told me earlier that you didn't necessarily grow up in a religious family, and so how did you – embark on this spiritual quest it sounds like maybe mid midlife it happened for you um you, you know um my my although my parents were very victorian they were quite open-minded but when they, they wouldn't listen to me i can do i could do what i want so i was 17 when i started to look at alternatives to the standard christianity mm -hmm. and i and i love christ i i, I love uh, the um ishwa ben joseph um jesus is a label which we've given to him and then uh, corrupted but um mm -hmm. when he was born he chose the name ishwa ben joseph I chose the name Gulen Mortimer Drew, son of Joan and Emrys. And, and, and that brings in the genetics of physicality. And we, so we, we chose not only the name to vibrate in this form, but we also chose the genetics. And, and that's why Jesus is always known as Ishwa bin Joseph. He, 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 because in those days they didn't have surnames. Um, <clears throat> but um, I'll go off the point a bit. Yeah, no, I? that's okay. So we were talking about you were your spiritual quest, and you were mentioning how oh, you, right. you were very, very understanding. They, they necessarily didn't want to ascribe to what you were believing in, but they let you have free reign in that respect. I, I can remember at the age of about 18 getting more, getting into more more trouble from my girlfriend who was a choir in the, I met her in the choir um, than from my parents for thinking about. <laughs> uh, so um, they, they, I wasn't the chosen one in our family. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't comment. very, I wasn't listened to much and I certainly um, uh, wasn't corrected in my thinking. So there I had an advantage in that respect. You weren't taken very seriously, it sounds like. I wasn't taken seriously at all. Mm. No, no, no. I was only one in our family, and that was my brother. Mm 
and he was brilliant. Uh, he's got a brilliant mind, but he's he's got an academic mind. And it took many years for me to. He was a scientist. Mm, very. Do I need to say any more? Right. Yeah, it says it all. And and, and and a brilliant scientist. I mean, he got a he from South Africa, he got a, a scholarship to go to Cambridge. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's like top 99%. Yeah, that's impressive. Okay, so he, he 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 was but we had good genetics. And 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 I, my mind just went the other way. His mind went to to the brain. Mm-hmm. And although I used my brain most of my life. I realized that the brain is not the source of wisdom. It's a it's a um, <clears throat> it's an area where we accumulate data, mm-hmm. and then the smarter we are, we are able to access that data. Some people have got all sorts of data in their brain, and they can't access it. That's well, very true. That's very true. Um, uh, so, so, but then uh, it, it was, I was saying um, earlier, the um, harmonic convergence, which um, sh- shifted me. And that was 1987. 1987, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, that's when it started to prepare us for the entry into the Aquarian age. And they yeah. even had songs, didn't they? In the, the, they sure you know. did. Oh, back into the 60s, they had those songs, uh, right? See, they already had the most the famous 60s. one that we know. Well, the 60s were a great time. I mean, I was a teenager then. I was only a few months old, but I think I think I was re- reincarnated. I think I was a hippie in the 60s for sure. I think so. Because I still <laughs> I still am a hippie, and I still love the music, and I love the 60s. I, I, I just, I just I loved everything about it. Yeah, it's lovely energy, but it was hijacked, beautifully hijacked. Well, it's such – I love that you just said that because a couple of years ago, I was speaking to a dear friend of mine who – did a lot of healing with me over the years. And she, like you, is a lover of Christ. And she's more of a spiritual mystic. She's not religious, but she just loves walking with Christ. And um, she explained to me that, you know, years ago, this country, and she was narrowing it down to this country, but I think we can extend it a lot further. But she said, this country was taken over by evil. Our politics were, were hijacked. That's the exact word she used. That the left, particularly, were hijacked. And she even equated it to certain sides of the cross. She said the left side of the cross is where the evil was residing. And she compared left and right with Democrats and Republicans. It was a really fascinating conversation. I wanted to know what you thought about where evil fits in all of this today. It's it's duality based. And um, those fractals that chose to express what God is not are in the majority, I would say. And um, there was a stage in the in humanity where we were always connected with the gods. Now, they weren't gods, but they were higher beings. And they used to come down and have fun with our women because our women were so beautiful or are so beautiful in form they 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 were fascinated by form and but they they always had that contact and and the humanity had that contact um with them then we applied and this comes from the ascended masters um we then wanted to bring a, a more solid veil down so we f- would forget about any contact that we had with divine Mm-hmm. And we were warned. The, the ascended master said we were warned. This is dangerous. This is putting the soul in a place of destruction. Mm-hmm. And um, the collective of humanity said, "We are here to define what God is not. Get on with it." And so we had even a, a stronger veil brought down. And we forgot about divinity. We forgot about God. And God was taken over by the um, um, machinations of the churches and religion. Mm -hmm. And we just went deeper and deeper and deeper into the dark side of the the, uh, polarity of illusion. 
we did it because that is what we had chosen to do when god said go out there and define what i am not and what i am and you have free will choice exactly so you're saying you're saying that the people the the fractals that came down and decided to de define what god is not is how you're defining evil that makes a lot of sense to me it is it is and, and it's not to be judged they're doing a damn good job hitler did a damn good job and remember it's a dream Mm. It's a dream. It's not real. That's the hard. That's the part that I think a lot of people have a hard it's time. It's hard for me. Yeah. It's hard for me. It's hard for me to say that. Yeah. And it's and it and I can be very because trite about real. it. We're sitting on a but, chair. We I'm, I have a microphone. We understand the quantum mechanics of it. As the farther down you go into the particles, there's absolutely nothing, and that's mind blowing in itself. It is. The, the it closer is. And, you look and, at something, the more it's not there. But you see, the more. We try and counter the darkness and the evil. The more we hold it in place. Mm. In my defenselessness lies my safety and my strength. I don't have to defend myself against the, that behavior. I don't have to become part of it, but I also don't have to defend myself from it. That spirit is much more powerful than that, not by might nor by power. And remember, power is by the power of the mind. Mm. Not only the might of my army or the power of my influence, whatever, it is by spirit. And it's as we align ourselves uh, to spirit gives us huge power to create a re not create I won't use that word uh, to de to design a reality that is perfect for me even in the last days of the illusion um, I, I can still do that mm. the fact that I'm moving in and remember it comes like a thief in the night mm -hmm. we will suddenly be totally in the the thousand years of harmony i think we're definitely heading in that direction it just seems like something is bringing us it's almost like the power that that is is saying okay enough you're going a little too far down we're going to pull you back here because if things keep going the way they are i don't know how we how we interact with one another you and i are fractals of light we've chosen a christ light I don't want to interact with this the dark entities and the evil that's on this this world and it seems harder and harder for us to commingle in a day like today that's okay too don't you know um uh the ascended masters have given us the information that um there will be more than one earth i think they said three the one will be the ascended earth so Gaia will ascend into, <clears throat> uh, into uh, the Aquarian age. And we have a choice of going with her. Uh, in, in millennium history, or what, what will I call it, uh, from the beginning, um, planets ascended, planets are consciousness, and planets ascend. And planets normally ascend without life on them. Mm. They shake off the light. No, so, sorry, they shake off uh, life in all forms, whether it's a human expression or whether it's nature. They shake it off and move on as a send. Uh, Gaia apparently um, asked for a dispensation to take all life with it. Oh. Now, we have free will choice. Nature doesn't nature is just divine mm -hmm. we we complicate it we make we think we see it as having choice but it doesn't have choice it is a collective consciousness in all different forms and 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 frequencies um and um it doesn't have choice um but uh, the gaia has the choice to shake it off as it ascends or to take it with it and it has apparently guy has asked for special dispensation to move with all life including humans mm. 
But humans have to make the choice. We can choose to ascend with Gaia by aligning ourselves to spirit or not. Or not. And well, I think that's the point we're at right now, that people are, people are, we're coming to a crossroads, it feels like. Um, I know I'm getting closer to my relationship with God. And I know there's, there's a huge movement up there. So many people are doing the is. same. There's still a lot of resistance. There's still a lot of resistance, though. I agree. They don't, they don't understand their true divinity, um, yes. but they can be helped. Now, now, just to finish the story about, about the three earths. Okay. The, the one ascends. The others, the other two, are different levels of frequency to allow human beings extra time to ascend. Because no new fractals, no new souls will be allowed to, to choose this experience of duality. That stopped about five years ago. According, oh, I've never heard that before. I know. According to our group uh, of um, Ascended Masters, they said no more. That stopped. It's too dangerous for the soul. So it is stopped. Mm -hmm. But all those souls that, are, that have um, met the requirements to experience duality will continue and to give them an opportunity to ascend bit by bit, out of the clutches of, um, uh, of duality and uh, probably with a lot of help from the ascended ones. Mm. And um, so they'll be given more time by having two Earths. That's a fascinating point. I, I've never heard that. So the, so the new uh, fractals of light that are being born now, are they just reincarnated? You're saying there's no new souls coming here is that no new souls talking? all reincarnation all reincarnation because yes. there was a time for many many years <clears throat> recently where people i heard that souls and spirits couldn't wait to come to planet earth they were looking down upon us and saying i want in on this i don't want to miss it's a beautiful place they, right? even the gods were corrupted by it right they came down and took our beautiful women <laughs> oh my goodness that's a that's the whole part that i've never heard yeah so i can only are, share you know yeah i can only share what i was given but um yeah, it sounds perfect. logical to me so if we're ascending and do you believe that in your lifetime you will ascend with gaia oh yeah oh yeah i have a job to do um there are there are many of us who are uh, seeded from different um, realms and and uh, don't really conform to the process of um, cycle after cycle of mm -hmm. um, just reincarnation after reincarnation uh, reincarnation mm -hmm. yeah so so they are the teachers of teachers um in at all times what more can i say you know um so you feel like you have a job to do you said what do you think that job is i'm the lone wolf crying at the moon <laughs> i love that and now. if anybody if anybody hears me so be it oh i think i don't know i think maybe your days of a lone wolf might be coming to an end i feel you have so much to share you have such a, a wealth of love and information and um your your energy is so amazing and so many people i know would love to hear more of what you're talking about have you ever thought of starting a youtube channel i i i have been urged on many occasions to share it and i haven't really known how to and oh. that's why when you when you approached me i thought i couldn't want to be in partner with anyone else Oh, um, so somebody <laughs> holding my hand like you um, might just be what I was waiting for. And, you know, the time, it's all about timing. <laughs> and and we try and push and push and push. And it was just two weeks ago that I went to a channeling of a beautiful lady. And they just said to me, don't look for a zone of comfort in duality. Um 
that consensus reality is not for you. Mm -hmm. And that's where the lone wolf came out. It's a new thing. Well, you, uh, don't, you don't have to be a con an, in consensus, but you can be a teacher. You are a teacher. You always have been since I've known you. You've always been a person who imparts an amazingly spiritual, a spirit, spiritual truth. And you know how I to think, speak yeah. to God. I think I've been given a lot of information and, and it's to try and um, share it out, which is um, quite important. And and, and in the, when I have in the past, people look blankly at me and, they, and most of them do not understand what I'm um, thinking. That was in the past, though. Things are changing, Will. The energy, as you Things know, is shifting. Changing. The world yeah. right now needs people like you. They need people like me. This is exactly why I've started Sacred Valley. Finally, I've had this brainchild in me for a very long time. Um, the world is ripe for this kind of information. And there are many, many people that are going to be waking up and that are going to need guidance that, um, you know, if you consider yourself in, in a school, if you're in, if you're in uh, university, there are some kid, people who are just stepping into kindergarten that are going to be needed, needed to be led. And you are such a great person to do that. We all have a place in this ascension process, in my opinion. Thank you. Yeah, um, I, I I know what you're saying, and and I, I value it uh, incredibly. Um, and um, do you remember when we first met? Like the very Mixing, first time. Well, not perhaps the very first time, but at at that time, um, mm -hmm. you were you were hosting a a man from uh, South America, and uh, I got involved in preparing. Was it peyote? Oh, the San Pedro. That was um, that was my shaman, Ruben, in Sebastian. Yeah. Yes. And I, I know Ruben. you try to you try to convince me that I should experience uh, peyote, and um, my guides and everyone said, "Nope." Yeah. You've you almost there, did. You've you done it. You to don't do need it. to do it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's actually so. San Pedro is a cousin of peyote. It's a cactus, but yeah, I did a lot of. Oh, San Pe Okay, yeah. all right. I, I, I wasn't sure. I knew it wasn't ayahuasca, but uh, but no, I. No, that was um, that was in the jungle. I did a lot of that later, but okay. Yeah. I do. I I did forget though that you met Ruben and you, you considered um you considered doing ceremony with us, but you probably and made the beautiful right little. I loved that little flat, that little apartment of yours. I know. I call that my jungle bungalow. It overlooked the water. It and, did. I can um, still remember the, the little the little lake. It was not a lake, actually, it was a puddle. It was a lagoon. Actually, I called it a lagoon and one time um because it connected to the Saint Sebastian oh, was River. It? Oh, okay. Yeah, but okay. there was um okay. this manatee would come in and because of the water would be a little less brackish in that lagoon. Oh, and he would right. hang out. And I named that um I named that manatee Hugh. So he was Hugh Manatee. And he would come in and I would give him fresh lettuce or pour some fresh water because oh. humanities love fresh water. They don't get a lot of that out there in the, Beautiful. In the Atlantic Ocean. I do confess, so. I, I saw the beauty in you, uh, the divine beauty in you then, and I've never forgotten. Oh, so um, I, I'm so I, happy to you. get together with you again. This has been amazing. I am so, so glad that Jules, your daughter, recommended this. And as soon as she said it, I went, oh, of course, I would love to have your dad on my show. It's perfect. I, I really would like to have you back. I know we could talk for hours and hours. Um, I would we really can. Have you yeah. back and um, and talk, I'm sure there'll be even more to talk about the next time we speak. But um, let's plan that for sure. There's so much. There's just so much. It's beautiful. Well, I love you. It was so oh, great having you. you on Sacred Valley. Um, I will talk to you again soon. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Tara. Thank okay, you. you're welcome. And there you have it, everyone. That was a wonderful guest. I could talk to Will for hours. He's a very dear man, um, known him for a while now. And it's, it feel, I feel the same way talking to him now as I did 20 years ago. I hope you enjoyed the show today. I really look forward to uh, our next episode here on Sacred Valley. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have.